Wilson Boro there and Jerry Mushura with Mock the Week and certainly uh, bringing to perspective in a humorous way some of the stuff that went down last week. Well, this is the lifestyle section and I'm glad that you're here with us on the Morning Express and today we're going to be talking about trauma. And you know, trauma can be caused by a number of things. It could be an accident, could be an illness, could be sudden news of an illness, maybe a terminal illness. Uh, trauma can be caused by a number of things. And one of the things that uh, of course hit the headlines uh, the whole of last week and probably a bit of the week before is uh, a sexual harassment and uh, we talked about it even in terms of sexual harassment at the place of work sexual abuse and all these are things that can bring about trauma maybe you're one who has gone through trauma and would like to hear from you would like you to participate and maybe give us your experience and maybe you've been able to overcome maybe you're still struggling with it uh, would like to hear from you all the same and how do you do that the phone lines are going to be open and the phone line is going to be displayed on the screen you can also participate via Twitter and uh, let me know. And that's on, uh, you can tweet at Michael G. Gitonga or at Sophia Wanuna and would like to hear from me and also participate with you or uh, also at uh, KTN Kenya. And uh, well, joining me in the studio now is Dr. Catherine Siengo Mutisia, who's a psychiatrist. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And uh, do I call you Dr. Catherine, Dr. Mutisia, Dr. What do you prefer? Either. Either. <laughs> okay, I'll stick with Dr. for now. Yes. And thank you for coming. Now, uh, trauma, of course, is something that we go through due to various things that happen in our lives. Sometimes some things which are not even as, you know, major as we would imagine, but they still traumatize us. Um, maybe first we can start by defining somebody who's going through trauma. What, what exactly is happening in their lives? Mm -hmm. Yes, trauma can arise from... Uh various changes in our life for example what you've mentioned sexual violence it could be physical trauma like assault or being mugged it could actually be natural disasters like an earthquake or it could be terrorism like we recently witnessed the Westgate and right. uh, the various bomb bombings which have been happening it could actually be um, things to do with normal stress issues mm -hmm. for example uh, adjusting to loss of a relationship loss of a loved one or in in, uh, in children it can also happen if something goes wrong early in their life mm -hmm. like they are not getting adequate care from their caregivers like basic needs or like children who have various caregivers not getting one-on-one -on -one caregiving for example in uh, uh, like children who are adopted or not really adopted children who are in orphanage mm -hmm. before they are adopted because there are many care, there might be fewer care, caregivers compared to the number of children okay yes. is it possible for one to be traumatized and they're not aware that they are traumatized yes maybe not trauma but stress because we know there are various for us to talk about trauma mm -hmm. we require it to be a, a, a bigger stressor than the usual stressors mm -hmm. but uh, the stress day to daily daily to daily stresses people could actually be stressed to the extent of getting emotional problems and they don't realize it yes. what at, at what point is it then considered trauma okay that somebody is traumatized yes okay different people will respond to different uh, stresses differently mm -hmm. but we know some uh, issues like violence physical violence sexual violence natural calamities or uh, even disasters like fire can actually are considered severe enough to cause what we call acute stress disorder and post-traumatic stress disorder but again we know there are all sorts of stresses in daily life like any loss would precipitate stress in anybody in mm. majority of the people so we prefer to talk about stress and traumas mm. traumas being the major ones stress being what may be considered to be a bit mild okay yes uh, le let's uh, maybe first of all focus on uh, trauma that is caused by situations which sometimes are, uh, i would call almost controlled or manipulated i think would be a better word and these are maybe to do with sexual harassment uh, sexual abuse because mostly i think majority of the cases you realize this is this happens from people who you know or people who are very well known to the the abuser is well known to the abused uh, and sometimes are kept quiet maybe it can happen in a situation where it's a parent or a guardian it can be a boss it can be even in a church environment um, how does one deal with that and how do you come out of it given that first of all this is somebody who you trusted mm -hmm. Yes, you are right that uh, sexual violence most of the time comes from people known to the person being abused. Mm -hmm. And uh, the immediate 
uh, course of action would be to get first of all to get safety that is moving f away from the source from of the stress. environment then the second thing would be to get the appropriate medical care and then also get any legal aid which might be needed after the medical care but at the same time as you get medical care that's the time we also assess the, whether you are managing the stress well or whether the stress is overwhelming you uh, because we know that uh, in the first one month some people not everybody who is exposed to trauma would get acute stress disorder mm -hmm. and some will go on the first month they may appear to be coping then later on they developed what we call post-traumatic stress disorder so the immediate thing is get safety first move away from the stressor uh, then get medical care at the same time if it's a major calamity you'd also be uh, getting to in touch with your family members and source of social support then now in the process of the medical aid we are also trying to assess for your psychological and try try to give what we call psychological first aid mm -hmm. yes okay now in, in in cases of sexual abuse uh, whether boys or girls I was watching a feature yesterday where uh, there is this man who uh, was known to kill very many women um, and one of the things he mentioned is that he was abused as a young boy by a woman and that created in him a, almost a hatred for women however he was able to hide his feeling and his uh, projection towards women in a negative way to where he was actually describing himself as a very quiet humble person but later he projected and he became now a serial killer now, uh, to avoid situations like that, can one, number one, identify when they have a problem within themselves? Because he may not have known how far the extent of the trauma has gone until later in life. And secondly, to those who are observing him uh, or as somebody in that situation, how do you tell that they've gone to a point trauma is, it could affect them even later in life? Because this was not immediate. It's many years after the abuse that now he began to do this. Yes. And you're right, people respond to traumas or stress in different ways. There are some who will externalize it, even in childhood, and, uh, or others who will internalize. Mm -hmm. Now, those who might not talk about their issue or express th their traumas, uh, the effect of their traumas when they are young, they are like the example you've given us. They have always internalized their problems in terms of they might withdraw from caregivers. They may be disinhibited, but the other children who, when they are abused, then they might also externalize by mm. probably being too social, being so outgoing. They would even uh, be very free with a stranger, for example. So that is externalizing. Now, uh, if that is not recognized early, like in our case, mental health services are not uh, available mm. uh, in most of the setups. So you find that people who will access me mental health treatment are. Who, those who have been noted to have severe illnesses of, or severe incidences. So you find that people who might be internalizing their problems and withdrawing and keeping it to themselves and probably even having self-harm to themselves might not be captured. But those who externalize will be noticed and they might be helped. Mm -hmm. So you find that later on, when you find that people are having either personality disorders or they are involved in crime or they are brought for assessment, you know all murder cases are brought for assessments to their psychiatrist. That's the time you start unhappy. Things which would have otherwise been dealt with earlier. But is there a way uh, of identifying these things at the early point as a guardian, as a parent, as a friend, as a companion, mm -hmm. so that you can seek help for them before it becomes destructive? Are there telltale signs? Yes. I've said when people are traumatized, uh, and now we are talking about now trauma early in life, in childhood, some children will tend to internalize. So they will be withdrawn. They might not want, whenever they have an issue, they would prefer to keep it to themselves. Others would externalize. They would uh, be outgoing. We've had uh, girls and boys who were raped when they were young, and, and they turn out to prostitution. They are externalizing their problems. Mm -hmm. Or they are oppositional you tell them do this they disobey that is externalizing there are others who will even get into drugs early enough there are others who go into depression even suicidal attempt so when uh, there are two forms either they become withdrawn or either they become they externalize their problems so once you discover changes in behavior mm. 
or normal behavior because this is what is expected at, at a particular age even in schools teachers are actually able to identify even parents when those who have more than one child are able to tell there's something different with this child so when you are you, you identify some of those behavioral and emotional difficulties then it's good for that person to be assessed and in mental health assessment then we, we will find out about history of past trauma we also know people have been traumatized early, earlier in life when they are exposed to other traumas later on they are likely to get more of uh, acute stress disorder and post-traumatic stress disorder compared to those who have never been exposed to any trauma before. Okay. Yes. And just a quick reminder that the phone lines are now displayed on your screen and uh, if you've got an experience you'd like to share or maybe it's even just a question. Possibly you've gone through trauma and uh, have been helped or have not been helped. We have Dr. Catherine Sengomutisia who's a psychiatrist and uh, she'd be more than happy to see if she can help you or answer your question if you do have one. You can also get in touch via Twitter and that's at Michael G. Gitonga or at Sophia Wanuna. Let's talk about rape specifically uh, because with rape it comes sometimes with a feeling of guilt. Uh, maybe I was at the wrong time, uh, at the wrong place at the wrong time. Yet it's totally inexcusable. There are others who feel maybe I led him on. Um, others may feel, but there's that feeling of guilt. How does one deal with that? Mm -hmm. Yes, actually it would be very important for anyone who is raped to be encouraged not to blame themselves because usually the problem would be with the the person violating you not really you might not you, you are most of the time you're not the one who has done something to encourage the rape but part of the uh, traumatic sequelae is to have those feelings of guilt mm -hmm. so initially when somebody is raped uh, different people would react differently but we had mentioned first the first thing is safety first move away from the abuser then seek medical treatment and we know with rape also it would be good to actually report and have uh, we encourage people not to actually bathe or change their clothing mm -hmm. so that uh, in, in future if you are, you are following up for the case then at least there is evidence mm -hmm. uh, samples can be taken from the clothing and you should not take a bath so that if there are any samples to be taken then that can be captured uh, and again, our society does not help much because every time somebody is raped or uh, sexually assaulted, that people are quick to look out. Why, why were you late? Was, that, yeah. Why were you out this late? Almost blaming you. How are you dressed? Mm. And, and that is very unfair. Mm -hmm. But as much as we cannot change the society, we always encourage people, be your own best friend. That even if the whole world was to turn against you, then you can actually stand up for yourself. Okay. That I did not do anything to deserve this. Mm -hmm. And so keep supporting yourself. Okay, I'll, I'll yes. cut you short there. Masi in Kapenguria. Good morning, Masi. Good morning. Yes, Masi, to your question or comment? It is a question and it is somehow. Uh, I would like to know. Come on, 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 come now it is like we have been looking for time for that all this time. You have been? To look at my pastor, my daughter, and I have my mother there. Okay. Then it is like, ah, my pen is me. I'm saying, I'm going to eat. 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 Okay, ma Masi Sikuski Vizuri, Tafadali, just uh, talk a bit loudly. And you gonna say, ma? To to my God, I can talk for this time. He he is married now. One year in the house. Okay, now I'm just part of Toto. I'm just part of. This is a new money. Okay. All right. You gonna you gonna yeah the best way is to come in yes and immediately yeah they fix. All right. Thank you, Masi. Uh, yes, Masi there who's been married for one and a half years and they've been trying to get a, a child and they have not. Uh, she's asking how does she overcome that stress or is it trauma? Yeah, it, it's a, a stress, probably a chronic stress because probably... What, what is a chronic stress? 
stress which keeps going on okay. from, uh, because I'm assuming they've been trying to get a baby mm -hmm. uh, then a pregnancy test is done is negative they try again the test is done is negative so I would classify it is more of a chronic stress okay. as opposed to a trauma which is a severe acute event which happens it might be life-threatening or mm -hmm. it could be threatening your integrity at that particular time so people who go through chronic stress like she's described mm -hmm. uh, could actually get uh, various emotional and uh, psychological problems mm -hmm. question is how does she overcome how does she overcome mm -hmm. yes uh, for one they need to seek medical aid to be sure that uh, all the causes have been uh, evaluated and mm. any necessary medical treatment is given and again the person providing this medical help should actually be able to tell whether this person needs further psychological assistance and for her to make a call i believe she uh, is it's either anxious mm. or she could actually be getting depressed as a result of it and i am not sure whether she's getting enough uh, social support because uh, when you don't get social support that makes the situation worse so i would encourage her to actually try and get further uh, mental health support mm -hmm. for her to be able to cope with what she's going through what she's going through yes. okay we have mercy in kitengela good morning mercy morning how are you very well thank you mercy thank you for calling yeah. okay yes go ahead Okay, I lost my daughter in 2012. Mm -hmm. Okay, my daughter, actually. Mm -hmm. So, my daughter, 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 my vile nilizika mtoi hiyo kitu ijai ni toka kwa akili mhm mm naona so imeshinda tu kiniuma 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 till day sasa sijui kama hiyo ni stress ama ni trauma sijai sauna ni nimejaribu nimejaribu kukaua mtoto na nimeshindwa okay na mlikuwa mmekosana na baba ya mtoto hatukwa tumekosana jamaa just went aka akanyamaza mm -hmm akaacha kutumana support do barioli ya mtoi yeye ndiye alitumana pesa kila kitu but he didn't attend the barrio so imekuwa ikaniuma inaniuma till the did we learn about that that we that trauma okay and her relationship yake na mtoto ilikuwaaje okay vile hata nili vile nilijifungua Mm -hmm. akuwai ona mtoto do alikuwa anatumana pesa nini nini everything okay mm -hmm basa kwa hiyo na mtoto na ni mtu alienda kwetu mm -hmm. na nikaenda kwao no. okay sawa yes. thank, thank you masi we'll answer your question shortly i'll take another call from pauline in narok then we can answer them together pauline good morning good morning thank you for calling pauline uh -huh. yes go ahead um, i was asking mm -hmm. is and the one form of stress okay thank you pauline Great. Oh, last year, mm -hmm. I had some complications, and then I was sorry with somebody. You had some complications? Yeah, and then I seek medical advice, and then I was sorry with somebody. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Okay, so thank you, Pauline. I'll take one more call from Jacinta in uh, Narok, uh, in Donholm, sorry. Jacinta, good morning. Yeah. Uh, is that Jacinta? Yeah. Yes, Jacinta, good morning. Okay. Uh, I was raped when I was 15. You were? I was raped uh -huh. when I was 15. Mm -hmm. mm, I get pregnant. Mm -hmm. mm, nobody asked for me. That guy wanted that. Uh, Jacinta, I, I, you'll need to speak up a little bit. I can't hear you. Okay. Nobody followed that case. Mm -hmm. My mom went silent about it. Mm -hmm. Even my aunt. Mm -hmm. And she was that much. Then when I get back to mm -hmm. the, my baby. Mm -hmm. Okay, now in Kenya. Mm -hmm. I even drop out that food. Okay. I was at time I, uh, I I wanted to feel the baby because I wanted to go to school. Okay. And my parents and 
now money to uh, Jacinta, in, in the interest of time, what would you like to know from uh, Dr. Yeah, that is a trauma for you. Okay, so now what I'm doing is, mm -hmm. I'm going to get some I don't think it's right in white column. I then hmm? said something real. Okay. Yeah. So I'm trying to see when I see that baby, I might shout at him. I okay. might meet him. All right. So many things are going on. All right. Thank you, Jacinta. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, uh, Dr. We have uh, three questions here. Let's start with Masin Kitengela, uh, who lost her baby in 2012, and uh, the father never attended the funeral, and that has affected her. We are now in 2015, and from her voice and her tone, it sounds like it's still affecting her very deeply. How does she overcome that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically, mourning process itself, mm -hmm. people can be uh, tend to look for either a person to blame they might blame themselves or blame others uh, i don't remember she said uh, the barrier was how long ago but uh, if it's well the, the baby died in 2012 so uh -huh. must have been then for it to be disturbing her uh, three years later mm. then it means she actually needs to get uh, more treatment the other thing we would want to uh, follow up is uh, whether the dad the father of this child is uh, involved and how he feels about it probably what she may need to do is to have to have a discussion with the dad and discuss how she feels and get to know how he feels about it mm -hmm. we always tell people you can't change what has happened if the burial uh, taken took, place. yeah and he was not involved then we may not be able to reverse that but we can deal with the feelings because we say people feel sad not because of the event but because of how their mind mm. and what out of okay. so what are the thoughts she has formed as a result of that bad mother mm. does she blame herself for even the separation of the uh, of, of the child and the dad mm. what are the emotions and the feelings and the thought going in her mind is it possible that the father was also traumatized that didn't come for the funeral yeah it's also possible and that's why i would encourage them to discuss and get to know what the father also feels mm -hmm. but they also need uh, support psychological mm -hmm. support to be able to deal with the issue because we say it's not about the event which happens to you it's about how you process, how you process what it. you tell about yourself yeah. about the event and the 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 mental the, the thoughts you form afterwards mm -hmm. which actually makes you psychologically unwell but it would help if they actually had a discussion with uh, with the husband we, yes that could be yes. a starting point all right we have pauline in narok who was talking about anxiety uh, is it a form of stress is what she wanted to know and maybe we can expand that a little bit in terms of anxiety because we are anxious for different reasons mm -hmm. some it's because of exams others maybe because they're expecting a baby others because they're going for an interview is that a form of uh, can can you have anxiety to a point where it becomes trauma it it almost becomes repetitive and you keep failing out okay. of the anxiety yeah anxiety is one of the commonest mental illnesses we have mm -hmm. and there are various types like what you've described the generalized anxiety disorder people who will worry about almost all aspects of their life uh, there are also other forms like the phobias or uh, fears excessive mm -hmm. fears uh, but w as to whether anxiety is a trauma or not we know that uh, trauma uh, can actually cause uh, stress disorder. Mm -hmm. What we've been calling the acute stress disorder or the post-traumatic stress disorder. So trauma can cause anxiety, uh, but trauma is not the same as anxiety. You might develop anxiety not as a result of trauma, mm -hmm. but you could develop uh, anxiety uh, either from your genetic predisposition mm -hmm. or from events which happened as you grew up they're sort of parenting because you see if you are very harsh parents they could actually predispose you to that but trauma can also predispose you to uh, anxiety so trauma could be more of a cause mm -hmm. uh, the anxiety is a result of how you dealt or how you perceived the trauma
Okay. Yes. Uh, we also have Jacinta uh, who was raped at the age of 15 and she became pregnant. And uh, from what she says, her mom never really addressed it. She went silent. Her aunt also did not address it. She went silent. And uh, she eventually gave birth to the baby. But she feels like uh, the relationship between her and the baby is also affected because she's saying she shouts at the baby. And, uh, of course, maybe projecting her negative experience to the baby and feeling like, you know, you're a result of what happened. Maybe it's a constant reminder. Uh, what would you tell Jacinta and those in Jacinta's shoes? Yeah, it would be very good for her to access mental health care where she would actually be able to deal with that trauma mm -hmm. because we see if you don't deal with past traumas it could actually be making you behave in a certain way in future and actually predispose you for other psychological uh, uh, problems so it would be good for her to ha get psychological help and actually deal with that issue with a aim of getting what we call minimum effective response for her to be able to gain closure. Mm -hmm. uh, that means, like if you are treating her, you would actually want to find out from her what is the minimum thing you think you would want to do for you to feel like you've gotten some sort of um, closure mm -hmm. or some form of justice. And we don't have for, we don't ask for the maximum because the maximum could be you going to shoot the person who raped you mm -hmm. or very dramatic uh, uh, choices. Mm -hmm. We look for the minimum. Could it be even to write a letter and say how you felt or how bad this person was to you? If you feel that minimum effective response will actually make you gain closure. But of course it's not a one on a one sitting mm -hmm. you may have to have several sessions but it's important that she deals with that trauma because we know traumatized people who don't deal with their traumas end up traumatizing others right. like she's shouting at the, the baby, baby already mm. so it needs to be dealt with okay yes. now i'm sure support is and you mentioned it you know social support is a very key and important part of somebody's recovery when they're going through trauma and taking an example of jacinta where the mom went silent and it is uh it is common to have people report a certain traumatic event especially when it comes to things like sexual abuse or rape and you find the very support system that you're expecting to help you doesn't believe you maybe for the sake of those who may be approached how important is it to listen to the victim uh, to believe them and at least to you know seek some help yes social support is very important for people who are recovering from trauma uh, but we also realize that uh, in some cases, the people you would expect to be your best supporters, like your parents or mm -hmm. your siblings or your spouse, might not actually be, or they could actually be traumatized themselves and they might not actually be in a position to assist you. That's why we encourage people to also seek uh, support from other sources, mm -hmm. like medical care or psychological care, relatives, psych relatives mm -hmm. uh, wherever you can get support, get it. Uh, so if you find the immediate people are not understanding your situation or they're actually forcing you to make decisions which you don't think are good for you. For example, somebody telling you to conceal rape and deep inside you, you feel, no, I should not conceal it. I'll, mm. I should actually follow it up. Then you should actually go ahead and look for somebody else who can actually support you, achieve what you feel is good for you rather than just accepting. Uh, what uh, the family members are giving you and it's not that I'm blaming her because at that point she didn't know what to do most people get into shock and they don't realize what they need to do but even now she can still follow it up and get healing okay yes we have a call from Karimi good morning Karimi morning to you how are you I'm fine yes Karimi to your question or your comment me I'm a mother of three ladies mm -hmm. three girls mm -hmm. I've suffered yeah, what happened in the year 2000? Uh, my husband sort of never misbehaved after I gave birth to my last born. Okay. So he left me. Mm -hmm. He went to a place with me for a long time and then I suffered because he never wanted me to give birth to a baby girl. He wanted a baby boy. Okay. And he has never been supportive to me since I got married. Mm -hmm. So I've suffered anxiety, it left anxiety kind of my brain, and then right now I was told that I'm having a new I've visited several psychiatrists, I've, felt, I've visited several doctors, but my problem has not been solved. Mm -hmm. Until now I'm not, I'm not, I know I'm still in a crew, but now I'm in a hobby. Okay. Yeah, seeking some medical treatment. Okay. 
Yeah, so my problem has become chronic. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Karimi. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, there's Karimi um, with three children, and the husband left after she gave birth to the third girl. He was expecting a boy, and she's uh, going through anxiety. Mm -hmm. How how does uh, how do you help Karimi? What should Karimi do? Okay. Yeah, Karimi went through a breakup in a relationship, which can be and he in her case is a source of uh, stress and uh, she's not been able to adjust to the status mm -hmm. uh, so we would call it more of an adjustment disorder mm -hmm. and uh, anxiety you can have adjustment disorder with anxiety or even adjustment disorder with depression so she needs support because as uh, when relationships break there are people who would actually adjust and they're able to move on but for her case she's not able to uh, to adjust and move on so she so needs far. support mm -hmm. and there are other issues surrounding her situation because to me i seem to feel probably she's been having girls and uh, she was not able to have a son mm -hmm. which she cannot be blamed for but it seems the husband according to if i, I understood her question, it against her yeah right. so those are other issues which actually needs to be addressed mm -hmm. she needs to be assisted so that she stops blaming herself mm -hmm. because she's not actually responsible for the sex of the child so she needs like psychological support okay yes. and uh, in case she's blaming herself uh, what would you encourage her mm -hmm. uh, especially given that uh, really whether to get a boy or a girl is not in the woman's uh, power it's mm -hmm. the man who actually provides the X or Y chromosome yes yes yeah I would uh, she she really needs to be explained uh, I'm sure if she's seeking medical aid she's being told that uh, it's not uh, she should she should not blame herself for not having the sex she desires or the sex the husband desires uh, but it's not as easy as telling you don't get worried don't right. get anxious mm -hmm. some people even if you reassure them they are not able to to heal right. so they might need extra like cognitive behavioral therapy mm -hmm. to deal with their thoughts and mm -hmm. to actually be able to deal with the situation Yes. All right. Well, I'm going to chime in uh, Sophia Wanuna here, and I'm sure she's been listening in the debate. Sophia, uh, do you have a question on trauma? Yeah, I think uh, what I would be keen to hear you uh, do or say is emphasize the need to seek help for many people because they'll go through all of this, you know, alone and not realize that it's something that will drag on for longer if they do not have assistance in trying to deal with this trauma. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. It would be very important that if you are exposed to trauma, to actually be assessed. It's unfortunate that even when we have uh, bigger traumas like uh, the, the terrorism acts, the West th uh, that uh, yeah. we do not have enough mental health uh, professionals to mm -hmm. actually be able to help each one of the people. Although not everybody would actually develop uh, psychological yeah. issues which need treatment, mm -hmm. but it would be good if you have gone through certain traumas to actually be evaluated to see whether you are coping well or you need extra aid. And the people who start experiencing that trauma later on after the fact, an incident could happen now, some immediately after will start having some of this um, experiences, post-traumatic post stress, yeah. stress yeah. disorder, but for others it takes a while before it exhibits. Yeah, some people might appear normal the first one month, then it comes later, even six months. Yeah. And even for people in media, when you are covering some of those uh, incidences, you get traumatized because you actually need to bring news to us, you are getting exposed, mm. and you may not realize that you also need treatment. Right. Okay, Dr. Yes. Sengo, thank you so much for joining us on Managing Trauma this morning on our lifestyle segment. That's where we'll end the show. Our time is up. It has been a pleasure to be with you this morning. Don't uh, forget uh, to join us tomorrow. Make a point to be with us right here on Morning Express because on Person of Interest, State House Spokesperson Manuel Isipisu will be our guest. There's a lot to discuss with him, especially after that State of the Nation address that was delivered by President Uhuru Kenyatta last week. So definitely an important discussion to catch also for the politicization that has come from that and the statements that have also come from his office. So person of interest tomorrow at 7 a.m. Manuel Isipisu, State House Spokesperson. And that's where we'll end it uh, for today. Yes, and uh, thank you very much, Sophia, for a very wonderful discussion on State of the Nation and bringing it down what exactly it means and also uh, mental health or rather uh, stress trauma and, uh, trauma 
uh, dealing with it right here. So thank you so very much for joining us right here on Morning Express. And like Sophia says, tomorrow bright and early, do join us and we've got a great show lined up for you. Otherwise, and have yourself health. a great day. On health, yes, tomorrow we'll be talking about uh, arthritis. Just, and of course, the weather has changed. So with the cold weather, sometimes, you know, your joints ache a little bit. So we'll be looking at arthritis tomorrow. So do join us tomorrow on Morning Express. Otherwise, have yourselves a great and a wonderful day. Have a lovely day. Bye.